Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to be covering equivalent ratios. And as you can see on your screen, we have four problems or examples that we're going to go through together in order to get this down. On the left side, uh, numbers one and two, we're going to find a few examples, few equivalent ratios for each of those. And then on the right side, numbers three and four, we're going to pick out uh, the equivalent ratios out of the choices A, B, C, and D. So let's take a look at number one here where we have eight to 12. Now equivalent ratios are just like equivalent fractions. We use multiplication or division. Whatever you do to one number of the ratio, you have to do the same thing to the other using multiplication or division, and you get an equivalent ratio. So for example, I can multiply both of these by three, and I'll get an equivalent ratio. So eight times three is 24, 12 times three is 36. So 24 to 36 is equivalent, it holds the same value as the ratio eight to 12. Now I can multiply both of them by 10 and get 80 to 120. As long as I do the same thing to both numbers of that ratio, I get an equivalent ratio. So multiplication, I can multiply uh, both those numbers by anything in the world. So um, you know, an infinite number of answers there, as long as I do the same thing to both the left and the right hand side. Now division is a little more limited because I need a common factor between the eight and the 12. So for example, I can't use five because I can't do eight divided by five and 12 divided by five. Five is not a factor. I'm not going to get a whole number when I divide both the eight and the 12. Can you think of a common factor between the eight and the 12? Hopefully you're thinking either two or four. So for example, division, I could do eight divided by two is four and 12 divided by two is six. That would be an equivalent ratio. Or I could use the greatest common factor, which is four and divide both by four. So eight divided by four is two and 12 divided by four is three. This one would actually be two to three would be the simplest form of eight to 12. And simplest form is an equivalent ratio as well as being simplest form. So there's number one, again, multiplication or division. And if you do the same thing to both the numbers of the ratio, you get an equivalent ratio. So let's take a look at number two, 27 to 18. Let's use division first. So can you think of a common factor between 27 and 18? Hopefully you're either thinking three or nine. So let's divide them both by three to start. And we would get nine to six, which is equivalent. Or like I mentioned, you can divide both by nine and get three to two. Or our other choice for equivalent ratios is multiplication. So let's multiply both of them by two and we would get 54 to 36. Now let's take a look at number three where we have 20 to 15. Now we need to find the equivalent ratios out of our choices there, A, B, C, and D. So let's start with A, which is four to three. So let's think, how would we get 20 to equal this four here? Order matters. So the when we're looking at equivalent ratios, this 20 needs to be matched with this four, the first number of the equivalent ratio. And the 15 needs to be matched with this three. So 20 divided by five gives us that four. Let's do the same thing to the 15 and see if we get three. 15 divided by five is three. So this is an equivalent ratio. Now B three to four, that has the same numbers, right? It has a three and a four, just like A, 
but it's not in the correct order. Order matters when it comes to ratios. 20 divided by 5 does not give me 3, and 15 divided by 5 does not give me 4. So B is not equivalent because order matters. C, how do I get 20 to equal 40, right? Well, I could do 20 times 2. What happens if we multiply 15 by 2? Well, we get this 30. So C does work out. It is an equivalent ratio. Now D, all right, we have a 10 to start with. We could do 20 divided by 2 would give me this 10. Is 15 divided by 2 15? No. So D is not equivalent. Number 4, we have 4 to 10. So let's take a look at A, where we have 40 to 100. So we have to think, okay, how do we get this 4 to equal 40? Well, we can multiply it by 10. What happens when we do 10 times 10? That gives us this 100. So we do have an equivalent ratio there with 40 to 100. B, we have 5 to 2. Hmm. I can't really get this 4 to equal that 5 using multiplication or division, but I can do 10. I can do this 10 divided by 2 to give me that 5. But just like number 3, order matters. So I can't take that 10 divided by 2 and give me the first number in a ratio. B does not work because order matters. C, we have 12 to 30. I could do 4 times 3 gives me this 12, and the 10 times 3 gives me that 30. So I did the same thing to both the 4 and 10. So that means I get an equivalent ratio. So C would be equivalent. Now D, 2 to 5, is very similar to choice B, right? And involves a 2 and a 5 but it's in a different order. So let's see if this one works. I know four divided by two gives me this two, and this 10 divided by two gives me this five. So I can divide both of them by two, and I would get this ratio, two to five. So D is equivalent, all right? So there you have it. There's equivalent ratios. Hopefully that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.